Ooh, you see that? Okay, we definitely got to clip that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chaos Craft. I'm your host, Matt, with Schematical. And today, we are working on the new targeting system that I was talking about last week. They successfully targeted chickens, unfortunately, not during my live stream on Friday, but during a different Twitch live stream I did earlier in the week, so we've got some good footage of that. In this video, I'm going to go into a lot of detail about how the new targeting system works. It's kind of like a feature extractor, I've been told. So if you're interested in watching Neural Nuts learn how to solve games like Minecraft and play them, please smash subscribe and follow along as we do this. Last week, we taught them how to play King of the Hill by putting a bee at the top and telling them to target it and using the pitch, the yaw, and the distance from the bee as the raw inputs for what the bots would use to find the, the top of the hill. This week, we're allowing them to select their own targets based on a secondary neural net that I created. Here's how it works. So we've got our basic neural net with inputs and outputs. And those neurons are connected via other middle neurons in a hidden layer. For more information on this, check out my other videos on Neural Networks Explained. If you've been following for a while, you will know that they have different biological traits. For example, they have 10 eyes right now. They also previously had the ability to select a skin color. They now have the ability to have a target slot. It's a spot in memory where an object, uh, like an entity, which is a mob or any type of creature, an item, could be stored or a block position, indicating a block they want to go to. The pitch, yaw, and distance to this target is fed back into the neural net continuously. Over time, other things will be added, like what is the target's type, the target's health, things like that. So what's the best way to determine this target? I settled on designing a secondary neural net that does not tick at the same intervals as the primary neural net. This is done by setting a variable called the eval group, which groups together the neurons for that part of it so they can be evaluated separately. You might wonder why I did that, why they wouldn't tick with the normal neurons. Well, let me explain. Let's say, for example, we have an image with 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. We feed that into a neural net. It has three values, R, G, and B, red, green, and blue. That means you have a ton of input values. It's a lot, but it could get worse. In Chaos Craft, it's a lot more complicated. We don't have a simple RGB system. We have to use the, um, the type of items. So that means that it's either Boolean yes or no, one or zero for each type of item. There are hundreds and hundreds of items and hundreds if not thousands of blocks and hundreds of entities in there that need to be identified. So if we feed each one of those into the neurons as a Boolean one or zero, which since it's 3D is 20 times 20 times 20, if we have a 20 block range or 10 on each side. That doesn't seem like a lot until you take into consideration how many items there are in the universe and blocks and entities. Let's just say there's a thousand. With mods, I'm sure there's a ton more and I'm pretty sure a thousand's a very low ball number anyway. When I went to calculate this on Google, I was surprised to see that it said the number was infinity. So I tried another site. It too was unable to comprehend what the actual number was. And you could see even at a hundredth or to the 10th power, it's still an astounding 39 zeros before it stops. Basically what I'm saying is that is not a feasible way to play this game. So I had to come up with a different system. What I designed is a smaller neural net that only needs one type input for each of the block types and entity types. So it could get as complex as 1,000 neurons, but it's unlikely to get nearly as complex as the other ones. What it does then is it iterates through all the potential targets around it. So that's 20 by 20 by 20. It feeds every single one of those entities and blocks and items through the neural net one at a time. And it does all that while ticking not in sync with the main neural net. So I'll use a little swim lane diagram on the side to show you guys. In case you didn't know, Minecraft ticks 20 times a second, trying to calculate physics and where things should be. And our neural nets do the same. When the neural net decides it's time to do a scan, it ticks as many times as there are blocks and entities to scan in a row. For 20 by 20, that's 8,000 blocks plus however many entities it finds within that space. Then the primary neural net resumes ticking at its normal pace. In reality, I do throttle it a little bit, but that's not needed to be explained here. Let's zoom in and actually see what happens when the target neural net is ticking. For this example, I have a grid. It's 3 by 3, but just imagine it's bigger. 
So what happens is when the primary neural net decides it is going to fire off a scan, it then starts engaging the secondary neural net, passing that in as an input each one of the blocks around it. And then that factors in things like pitch, yaw, and actually any of the main primary neural nets inputs as well, so health or what they have in their inventory. But its main focus is the block or entity that is it is scanning around it. As each block and entity get passed through the neural net, they get assigned a score. At the end, when it's iterated through all the blocks and entities within the range, the one with the highest score is then used as the target. Let's zoom back out. So we've got all of our targets up at the top, ordered there by score. We select the highest scoring one, and that becomes the new target. The inputs from whatever that high scoring target was are now fed into the primary neural net every time it ticks, pitch, yaw, distance, etc. Now there are a few other complexities I'd like to address real quick. So we want to be able to feed in information from the primary neural net to the target selector neural net, but we don't want it to happen the opposite way around. If that were to happen, being as there's not a block selected for scanning at that point, because we're not in the middle of a scan, those neurons would just blow up. So that would be a bad thing. I took this into account when designing this, and it seems to be quite effective so far. Now let's talk about the future. Right now they only have one target slot, but in the future I want to make it so the biologies can mutate additional target slots. They might use one for evasion, or another one to select a resource versus a friend, or a resource versus a target, or even item entities. The possibilities are literally endless. I have no idea what they're going to choose to do, but I look forward to finding out. Now let's get back to the exciting part, when they actually started to choose their own targets. We saw a variety of odd behaviors pop up, such as chasing chickens in the corner. But one really intrigued me. I'll show you the clip from the live stream now. So this guy just made some decisions. Is he he's staring right at a chicken, but he's not doesn't look like he's scoring. Whoop, 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 whoop. What are you doing? No way. Guys, you know what's happening here, huh? This one just learned to someone clipped this. This guy just learned to track me. Can you do this? It's gonna overshoot me. Look at that. Oh my god, that's amazing. He learned to track me completely accidentally. That's a, just insane. I love this. And he's tracking like a pro. See if I can sidestep him. Can you go sidestep? Right in front. He has no idea how to stop. That's cool. This is freaky, but cool. Where'd he go? Oh, he changed his mind. The, tr the track is... <laughs> okay. I gotta fix that code because they shouldn't be trying. He's just picking up and dropping stuff up there. This is getting all kinds of weird. This is why you, this, you, you these live streams are interesting. First he learned to track me, then he wanders off and just does this. Let's see what he's thinking, because he can't be scoring anymore. The score events, 45 seconds, all right. Neural net, actually let's check out his tracker, what he's tracking. He's tracking a Minecraft item. So he went from tracking me to tracking Minecraft items and just picking up and throwing them. That's cool. That is cool. And now he's dead. I didn't realize it at the time, but he actually tracked a total of three targets. Here he's tracking a chicken. Then he changes his mind and starts following me around. I have no idea why, but that's pretty amazing to me. I was in shock. Now one thing you may notice as well is the head is facing the wrong way to actually be looking at me. That is a problem we've seen over and over again because I was rewarding for yaw. But in the newest iterations, I've accommodated for that, and I'm trying to reward for having the accurate pitch as well. As time goes on, I assume this behavior will get much more sophisticated and much less random. But we'll have to keep watching to find out. 
This was the only bot I saw make decisions. Other bots also learn to track me and chickens, but this is the only one that I saw change its target on me. Let's take a look at some of the others. All right, buddy. Look, I meant to check his how much he's got to live. He's got a long time to live. He's at 1,400. Should I end it now, or should I let him play it out? What are we, five gens in now, and they're tracking both people and chickens, but I'm going to need to give them some more neurons. Let's see if he's got any custom neurons, actually. Getting the fitness functions just right for that pitch and yaw has been key. When I overdo it, they learn nothing, but when it's just right, they really learn quickly. It's quite impressive. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. What I've been working on as well is an import function so you can pull neural nets in from one training room to another, as well as a simple way to add roles so they can have different fitness functions. Think hiders and seekers. In the meantime, if you like this video, please subscribe. Share it as much as you like. That always helps. Someone like at mention notch or something like that. And, uh... A special thanks to all the patrons. You guys help me keep the servers running, which are mounting in cost. I've got a 502 error I'm hunting down right now. Probably because we maxed out some data store again. With that said, I'm Matt with Schematical. See you next time. Did that guy just throw an egg at me? Oh. What do we got here? Holy mackerel. See that neural net? That's crazy neural net.